Hi, I am Brett Dupree, your passionate, inspiring, champion of authentic joy, Dupree Life Coach. Today, I'm talking about forgiveness, which is exactly is the heart of the matter. Even if, even if you don't love me anymore. I want to live without you now, but I can't. The more I know, the less I understand. Oh, sorry. I just love that Don Henley song, and I like listening by Indy uh, Irie. Oh, this is a beautiful voice she has. However, I know I've talked about forgiveness in the past. However, I want to make a new forgiveness video. Will you please forgive me? Forgiveness is one of the most important things you can do in your life, especially in relationships. If you're in a relationship with someone in the past that hurt you, who didn't treat you well, who did not do what you wanted and, well, hurt you and didn't treat you well, forgive them. What? What do you mean forgive them? You mean accept them in, back into your life? No. If someone does not treat you well, if someone does not give you what you deserve, you don't have to invite them into your life. Forgiveness does not mean bringing them into your life. Forgiveness means letting go of the anger and resentment that you have in the past. I am really big on using your pain to make you better and not bitter. To hold on a grudge, it will make you bitter and distort you and make you feel bad. In fact, I love the old Chinese proverb, which I'm probably mutilating, that to not forgive is like to drink poison and expect the other person to get sick. Or I believe they say hold a grudge. Forgiveness is extremely important in relationships because when you don't forgive, you're going to take that anger and bring it to the next relationship. And you're going to look for those things in that old person in the new. You're going to bring the baggage from that old relationship to your current one. Is that something you want to do? Do you want to bring your old baggage into your new relationship? Do you want your new relationship to end exactly like your old relationship? I mean, the easiest way to do that is to hold on to that grudge, to hold on to that anger, to hold on to it, and it will happen again. You'll almost force this new person to act like the old person because you're so afraid this new person will act like the old person. You'll do everything you can, almost, to try to manipulate that person unconsciously into acting like the old person. That is what forgiveness, not forgiving does. That is what holding on to that anger does. That's what holding on to that regret, that pain does. You gotta learn how to let it go. Let go of that anger. Let go of that pain. Forgive that person. Realize that that person was doing the best they can with the tools that they had. That's step one in forgiving. Most people aren't jerks. In fact, I believe the vast majority of people, if all things considered, would be fine, loving people who just want regular lives. Yes, there are sociopaths and people who don't have moral compasses, but I find them to be rare. And in fact, a couple of people who I think are sociopaths are actually pretty decent people in their own right. They just don't have that, they just, yeah, just, just some, seems to be something wrong with them and their thought part, pattern, but they don't seem to be evil. I mean, there are, I'm not saying there aren't bad people out there, but I think the vast majority of people, if you, they had all the love growing up, if they had everything in the right, in not ideal conditions, but good conditions, They'd be fine upstanding people and not trying to hurt you just out of anger or for fun manipulation. So realizing that helps. The best tool I find for forgiveness is the work by Byron Katie. She has something called the Judge Your Neighbor Sheet, which worksheet, which I highly recommend, especially for relationships. If you just got out of a relationship and you're feeling anger, hatred, pain, any of those negative emotions towards your significant other, do the work. And it's really simple. All you have to do is ask yourself, is it true? That's the first step. And you can write yes. There's nothing wrong with writing yes. If you feel it's true, write yes. The second question is, 
do you really know it's do you know absolutely that it's true you can still write yes you generally end up writing no on that one because can I absolutely know anything is true but you can be indignant as you want the next step which is really fun is who are you when you think that thought and you write down just who you are how you act how you present yourself to the world when you think that negative thought about that person hmm. and that gives you a good perspective of what this thought is actually doing to you and fourth step that's a four who would you be if you could not think if it was impossible for you to think that thought who would you be how would you act how would you present yourself to the world and then you'll see how your life would be if you could not think that thought. And then the most powerful part are the turnarounds. You do three turnarounds. Turnarounds is if you take that thought and you make it different. For instance, I use, as you know, I, if you've been a person who watched a lot of these videos and followed me, I felt abandoned by my mother growing up, and abandonment is one of my biggest issues that I work with on almost a consistent basis, especially when it comes to relationships with new people, because almost little weird trigger things happen. I mean, this is the weirdest one. The, you know, I talk about emotional triggers, and emotional triggers are those events that happen in your life that trigger something in the past that hurt you, and you kind of just feel that feeling all over again. And you kind of almost go into this automatic response. And one of my weirdest emotional triggers is when I am cuddling with a girl and she turns her back to me. And all of a sudden, it's like my five-year-old trigger turns on and I'm all of a sudden hurt. And it's ridiculous. But I know where it's from. It's from when I used to, when I used to nap with my mom and me and my sister used to fight on who she looked at. And if she looked at me, that meant she loved me. If she looked away, that means she didn't. Yeah, it's stupid. But sometimes that's what triggers are. Triggers are these emotional patterns that just happen over and over again that are triggered by certain actions. And as you know, I'm working on, well, well, you know now, working on the trigger of abandonment a lot. Yeah. The important part are the three turnarounds. And I'll use my mother abandoned me. And the first turnaround is putting just not my mother did not abandon me that's one that you could do and then you write on how that is just as true as the first statement my mother abandoned me second is I abandoned me and this one is interesting because oh no you turn it to the opposite I abandoned my mother this one is interesting because it shows you how that is just as true because when I really thought about it when I was hurt in the way she hurt me I totally just cut myself off from her and I abandoned her I mean think about it this is what happened and that turnaround helps because it shows you how you can do the same thing to the other person and the third turnaround which I like doing is either my thinking or to myself my thinking abandoned me or I abandon myself kind of turn around to myself and this one is amazing because I notice that every time I focus on that abandonment every time I focused on my mother abandoning I was abandoning myself I was putting myself through those feelings I was putting myself through everything and using that tool honestly using the work helped me forgive my mother helped me forgive a lot of people in my past almost any time I'm in a relationship and something happens and I get angry and mad or sad I do the work or sometimes I just do it quickly in my head because I've practiced it a lot. Even though she says don't do that, Byron Katie, the work.com. Sometimes I do things that I'm told not to. I'm such a rebel. But honestly, I highly recommend doing the work. I highly recommend cleaning up your past, especially in relationships, so you don't bring it to your future. Because holding on to grudges does nothing but hurt you. Forgive the people in your past. I highly recommend doing the work and live an amazing freaking life. Namaste.